Hey guys, well, I've been doing some testing with some short dew shells, like I said in my last dew prevention video, and I thought I'd bring you up to date on what the findings are so far. First of all, I've made some changes to the setup, so let me give you a little tour of what the setup looks like now. I made a few changes when I go over those. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, you'll notice that I've taken the Ultimate Power Box 2 out of the uh, less ultimate Tupperware box and I moved it up to the scope. It's velcroed on however there's a rubber band handy so I went ahead and wrapped a rubber band around it. I do like it. It uh, looks like a mess of cables but actually there's only three connections up to the mount. There's the uh, data connection, the blue cable that goes down. There's the red power cable and then there's the uh, cable that talks to the mount, that guy there, USB 2 cable. So basically those are the only three cables. I just attach those and take the whole setup in in the morning when I'm done imaging. The environmental sensor is hidden up under there, again attached with Velcro. But this reduces the cable links, both power and data cable links that I've been going with. What I initially tried to do was put the 12 DC power cable that came with the power box here and down into the mount. However, oddly, and I still don't understand why, the first night I tried to power up the mount and it simply would not go. Even though this is the, I'm using the shortest cable uh, that I have, the one that came with the uh, power box, it just wouldn't power. So I'm back to the AC-DC adapter and uh, I've been using that of late. Now, in addition to a couple of other things I've done, I'm playing around, as you know, with the dew shield. Uh, this is my makeshift dew shield. It is black inside, it's just poster board. I cut it down so it's about half the length, extended length of the um, foam uh, AstroZap dew shield. And so far, after roughly three nights of imaging, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. As you can see, the dew strap is still mounted around the outside. Once I get confident that this length is okay from a wind perspective, um, I'm going to move the dew strap on the inside so that it's heating the air column adjacent to the corrector plate. Uh, I am concerned a little bit about what that may do to my uh, installing the... <laughs> the uh, uh, batten off mask, but uh, so be it. But anyway, this is a temporary fix uh, that I'm using, and it's for however stupid it looks, it's actually working fairly well. By putting the power box on the other side of the mount, on the left side, that is as you're facing north, I've had to put this little offset mass uh, on the outside to kind of balance things out a little bit better in deck. It used to be that the focuser uh, did that for me, uh, but now I've got uh, that mass, I've got the power box mass on the other side so it's canceling that out um, so anyway I am going with this little doohickey contraption down there to to uh, provide a little bit better balance in in declination all right so just to bring you up to date on where we were at the end of the last video I basically first tried placing the dew strap on the cell and then when that didn't work placing it behind the cell in both cases the corrector plate dews up f fairly quickly once the temperature um, outside temperature gets around within about five degrees of dew point. I then tried the dew shield on a night where essentially there was no wind uh, with the dew strap wrapped around the end uh, of the of the dew shield as shown here on the right hand side and that worked fine. Uh, this is you're not going to get a much more challenging night than this when the dew point and the outside temperature are basically equal. That means the uh, the air is completely saturated with water. That system worked and it's it's it may be that the, the dew strap is helping out a bit by creating some warm air just adjacent to the corrector plate and uh, hopefully uh, preventing it from getting too saturated and dumping its uh, load of water on the corrector plate. But anyway, the dew shields are effective. The only problem is I can't use a dew shield when there's any amount of wind. It's certainly not the AstraZet dew shield that's about 13 inches longer than the SET. That creates quite a bit of a moment arm uh, for the deck axis when wind blows on the system. So that's a bit of a problem. So I wanted to test out some dew shields that are a bit shorter. I went to a uh, hobby or craft store and bought a uh, poster board for about eight bucks and cut it down to length. In this case, I created a dew shield that was about half the length, half the extension. So it's hanging off the end of the correct or end of the telescope by about seven and a half inches, which means there's about eight and a half inches of cavity down to the corrector plate, and it worked great. Uh, on nights when it would have dewed up, it uh, it prevented dew, 
and uh, and that seemed to work great. However, on June 4th here, uh, I began seeing PhD2 guiding graph going crazy, and uh, I had to go outside, and there was a little bit of wind. A little bit of wind had picked up that night. It was around 2.45 or so. And so I had to take off the dew shield in order to continue doing any imaging, and I just took my chances with the dew. I did leave the dew strap on, however, and I did leave the dew strap in a position where it was overhanging the end of the telescope by about an inch. The dew strap is about two inches wide, so I had to have something for it to hold on to. But so it was about an inch of it holding on to the end of the telescope and an inch of it hanging off. So if you want to think of it that way, it's kind of like a two inch long dew shield and uh, but it was providing heat directly adjacent to the externally adjacent to the corrector plate so i was actually very surprised when i got up the next morning and saw that this graph where the dew point had gotten very close to the outside temperature and no dew had formed so that's that's something that's saying that uh the, the dew strap is doing a, a pretty good job on its own. It's only one data point one day where I had that, uh, that occurrence. After that, I went back upstairs and took out my trusty X-Acto knife and created another dew shield out of that piece of poster board that now was only three inches uh, e- extension beyond the end of the telescope. So in other words, there's four-inch cavity from the end. Now, this poster board is white on the outside, but you can just see it here. There's, there's, it's black on the inside. I haven't done anything else in terms of surface treatment inside. One could, if you wanted to make your own dew shield, put some felt in there to kind of create a a, a more light-absorbing uh, surface. But uh, this seems to be working fairly well in terms of preventing uh, reflections of light. So I'm not encountering too much of that. It looks stupid. Okay, it doesn't look that doesn't look that impressive. But uh, but it does appear to work. And at least on June 6th and June 7th, when I was using the shorter uh, dew shield. The, t- the conditions were fairly ripe for uh, dew to form, and it did not. On June 8th and 11th, though, dew may not have formed even if I didn't have a dew shield. So these were not terribly stressing days, but June 6th and June 7th were up there. But I still haven't seen as stressing a day as at night as, uh, as is possible. I suppose the jury is still out on whether these shorter length dew shields will work, but so far so good. And uh, I'm fairly pleased with the results. And hope that I'm getting some protection against the wind, uh, reduced wind sensitivity with the dew shield, the shorter dew shield uh, in place here. All right, so just to summarize what we're seeing, uh, again, this goes back to the previous video. I, I can't get a single do not dew strap at full power to prevent dew on its own. Given where I've placed the do not dew strap in the past, which is behind the cell on the barrel of the OTA or up on the the thick metal of the cell, that doesn't prevent dew for for my setup in my uh, geographic location with the uh, humidity situation we have here. Um, the non-heated uh, AstroZap dew shield uh, costs about $60, okay, but in combination with the dew strap, it does prevent dew. Uh, so, there's no doubt about it. It's very effective, but I just can't use it when there's any wind at all. It's just it it's impossible for me to guide uh, the the telescope and maintain any decent guiding with the uh, with any wind that is present with that uh, that dew shield. So that's what prompted me to go off and uh, spend uh, all of eight dollars on a uh, poster board, black poster board, to make um, some temporary dew shields. I first started off making one about mid length. So that's about uh, eight inches, seven and a half inches longer than the than the uh, telescope, and about eight and a half inches from cavity from t- to the end of the dew shield back to the corrector plate. Uh, however, I did run into some wind sensitivity with that one. It did prevent dew, but I ran into wind sensitivity with that one, and had to uh, take it off to to get decent guiding. And that's what led me to create an even shorter one that only overhangs the end of the OTA by three inches. And uh, that has worked so far. Uh, I haven't seen the most stressing of nights from a dew perspective, nor have I seen uh, any uh, typical wind conditions that I would be out doing uh, uh, astrophotography in. So I think the jury may still be out on that shorter dew shield with respect to both the dew and the wind sensitivity, but uh, so far so good with that guy. All three dew shields seem to be doing doing well with the dew strap wrapped around the outside of the shield. Now, of course, I think things would be even better from a dew prevention perspective with the dew strap inside the uh, shield. The DS8 is sensitive to wind, um, and like I said, I'm just not sure yet. Um, just haven't seen 
windy conditions yet for the uh, DS3, so we're holding off on that one. If the DS3 continues to be effective, though, I think I probably will eventually mount the dew strap inside uh, that overhanging bit, and that way heat can can be applied directly in front of the corrector plate, and hopefully by raising the temperature of the air in front of the corrector plate, it will uh, increase its capacity to hold moisture and not be so uh, so tempted to dump all the water onto my corrector plate. Uh, there's one option here. The, the total length of my DS8 and DS3 are about the length of the AstraZap uh, dew shield. So it could be that uh, if if uh, this this works out, I may just cut the AstraZap down to the length of the DS3, which will give me uh, enough material to make uh, a DS8. It's possible that I could find that the DS3 is sensitive to wind as well when we get some wind, and in that case, I may have to try out my other idea, which is to mount a USB-powered fan off the end of the telescope blowing down so it keeps airflow going across the corrector plate. Not sure if that idea will work. I haven't tested it yet. Uh, I don't want to have to test it. I would prefer that the uh, shorter length dew shield just work because uh, I'd rather not be doing these little studies just for the sake of doing studies. Uh, but anyway, there is at least an option or fallback position if this very short dew shield does not work. Well, that's it, guys. I may be out doing some imaging tonight and a little more experience with the uh, short two shield. I'll talk to you guys later.